And there's something in there where you talk about the bees clan, the protectors. Uh -huh. I would like to know a bit more about the bee clan that are that can clan that can be protectors. So the bee clans, that, that, that material stemmed from my mystery school's teaching that is available as, a, as an e-book download um, where I talk about magical schools that were leapfrogging through time, gathering powerful students from different areas of time to remote view an ancient future time. And it was a sect of those mystery schools that realized that this was grand repetition with no grand illumination and a hierarchical system where only a handful of beings would make it to the top. They separated from that mass system of destruction and distraction and found beekeeping clans that had already understood lineage-based technology, which was the path to immortality. It's what the mystery schools were using too. It's how you can live in your lineage and then become into another lineage and then come back to that lineage three or four lifetimes later and someone in that lineage is magically potent enough to recognize the soul and make sure they read them back their memoirs from a hundred years ago when they're one and two and by the time they're three and four they remember ten percent of their past lives. Now imagine if you could know ten percent of your past lives. You know? Pretty, pretty good already. Okay. Would you make any mistakes? Probably many, many, many. Okay. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't make the same but mistakes. What do you mean? Maybe I, I misunderstood. If you knew 10% of your past lives, you would never make a state, yeah. mistake with the wrong man again. You would never mistake a mistake okay. with the wrong you job. Think, you think that much? Yeah. Okay. With the wrong man. Yeah. Right. Anything. That what education you should go and get that lifetime? Because your awareness isn't about one lifetime anymore. Imagine waking up in a three-year-old body with 10% of your memories of who you were the last lifetime and somebody reading it to you to remember what your next life, what your lifetime is going to be. You pick up where you left off with a younger body. By the time you're eight or nine, you're as mentally as an adult as you were before. So that is where the beekeeping clans came from, where whole herds of people left the negative mystery schools and were able to go deep into nature and find one hive or two hives or 50 or 100 hives of bees that became in dream time co-creation with them because bees are dreaming entities. Dreaming itself is a form of time travel also, a non-technological and very difficult to detect form of time travel. So these whole clans that left the negatives became a neutral dreaming clan or what we call dream time societies that are here to help seekers of knowledge. They are the medicine teachers. You know, when you have a plant medicine that you take, it is those at the ancient times that went into the beekeeping clan because it's the bees that made sure everything was pollinated in the environment. Apparently the dance... Uh Limits get dense at some point after they have all the pollen. So they do use that beautiful infinite sign in a dance uh, when they come back to the, their home with the, the mouth full of honey, uh, oh. pollen. Uh huh. So bees use a specialized form of physical pheromones and psychic pheromones. So as long as you are emanating non competition, non hierarchical order, the bees will not That's harm hard. you. No, beekeepers do it all the time. It's unity. It's oneness. Yeah, okay, I see. It's an ancient ability that is anyone can practice. It's faith and trust in yourself. This is of your herpetologists that, you know, can pick up a snake and it will never bite them because they know the emanation energy. The same with spiders. Hi, you know what? Snakes and spiders are always been in my life. The spiders lately, they just live into my life like crazy. They're big, and they're like a lot of them. I think I, I have to control them a little bit. And I used to love uh, small snakes when I was a teenager. I was, I could be a bit nasty to them sometimes. Yeah. 
But now I feel I'm called to that medicine as well. Anyway, it's a powerful medicine. One of the first medicines that I learned was bee and ant. Those Are were you serious? Yeah, when I was young and, you know, really, really on, on the path, those were the two that revealed their most amount of information to me. The ant was the yeah, strength and strength and endurance to get through any process, working together in the seen and the unseen world. And the bees were ants with wings. Okay? with wings in my greenhouse and they're eating my salad they're eating my tomato plants yeah. they're eating uh, so what those are and i don't know what to do what that is is there are multiple colonies of ants that are spawning new queens to go make new brand new hives so what they are is 50 percent of those ants or those are male that are well, if a female spawns and makes a nest, they'll, they'll form with it, and then they'll shed the wings and they'll become the first workers, or they'll just pass on in an area and be the initial, because what these ants do is they carry a special fungus with them, and that fungus is actually what the larvae eat, and that's why they bring back the pollen, and it's a, it's a unique structure inside there. And each ant has a different form of mold, a specialized mold that they eat, that they eat and consume and naturally produces with them. And this is the pheromone they give off with what type of scent-based mold you have or whatever it else is they're using as their, as their process. It's a seen and an unseen world telepathy-based communication. So that is what bee and ant taught me. It's, a, it's one of the, the big reasons I can, f I can do the Akashic Records at the skill set layer I do because my fundamentals were that. Ants and bees, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But those ants got to come out of my greenhouse. And now you're telling me this morning I found mold on my tomato plants. Yeah. They'll do something to my plants. And they have to respect this is my co creation with this land. They've got the whole forest. There's nothing around here except trees and soil. Yeah. So there are a handful of things that you can that you can do to get rid of those ants, and most of it's going to involve putting out some kind of all natural pyrethrin that takes care of them right away. I already tried running with hot water with with baking soda and no, that's vinegar. Not gonna do it. And that's, that's not going to do it. You actually got to get a a, a, py, a not an organic pyrethrin to take care of those. Yeah, I bought one of those. It stinks like crazy. It doesn't even seem to work. Big no, move there's, on the there's, other is, bed they're because drops. my beds are fluffy. No, they're little drops that you just put wherever you see them walking, and then they take that to wherever they're going. Drops, you mean like little seeds? Little, no, little drops of like a gel. Yeah. It's an okay. ant, an ant poison. That's specifically for those those they ants that are spawning that wings. Here. We tried so many too, and some love proteins and some love sugar. Yep, yep, yep. All right, darling, I've got to move on. I've got to move on to the next caller. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay. All right. This is you have a good one. Bye. Right. Ciao. Right, ciao. So now we got some questions in the chat. Thank you.